Welcome back. Let's practice finding the distance between points, lines, and planes. All right, so here's our first example. We wanna find the distance between the point and the plane, and we have a point of zero, 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 or the origin, and we have a plane equation of five X plus Y minus Z equals nine. All right, and so if you wanna find the distance between a point and a plane, you need to know the distance formula between a point and a plane in a 3D coordinate system. It looks like this. The distance is equal to the absolute value of a times x sub zero plus b times y sub zero plus c times z sub zero minus d divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And if you wanna know where this formula comes from, be sure to check out my lesson video on this topic where I show you how we get this formula. Okay, but what exactly is going on in this formula? Well, the values of a, b, and c correspond to the components of the normal vector or the vector perpendicular to the given plane. All right, and you can find those values of a, b, and c by looking at the coefficients of x, y, and z in the plane equation. a is the coefficient of x, b is the coefficient of y, and c is the coefficient of z. And by the word coefficient, I mean the number in front of each of those variables, all right? And then the value of D, that is the value that your X, Y, and Z terms are equal to in the plane equation. So for this plane, that value of D is nine, okay? It's all based on the general form of the equation of a plane. It's A times X plus B times Y plus C times z, and that's equal to d, all right? So you can line up those values with this equation to figure out what a, b, c, and d are for this formula. Now, x sub zero, y sub zero, and z sub zero, those three values are the x, y, and z coordinates of the point that you are calculating the distance between, right? We have a point and a plane. We wanna know the distance between that point and that plane, and so the coordinates of that point will be x sub zero, y sub zero, and z sub zero. And so that's all the different parts of this formula that you need to know. And so now we're ready to set it up. Let's just quickly write down what our values of a, b, and c are. a is the coefficient of x, which is five. So we have a is equal to five. And then b is the coefficient of y, which is one. So we'll have b equals one. And then c is the coefficient of z, which is negative one. So we'll have c equals negative one. All right, and then of course I already said that D equals nine. It's that value that our X, Y, and Z terms are equal to in the plane equation. Okay, so now let's calculate the distance. We'll have that the distance is equal to the absolute value of A times X sub zero. So that will be five times zero. So I write down five times zero plus B times Y sub zero. So that will be one times zero. So we have one times zero, and then we'll add that to C times Z sub zero, so that will be negative one times zero. So I'll write negative one times zero. And then finally, we are going to subtract that value of D, which is nine. So I'll write in nine, okay? Then in the denominator, the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared, what that actually represents is the magnitude of the normal vector for the plane the vector with components of a, b, and c, five, one, and negative one. So really we're just taking the magnitude of that vector in the denominator here. But anyway, let's just set it up. We're going to have the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So we'll have five squared plus one squared plus negative one squared. And now if we simplify, we have three values being multiplied by zero. So each of those values will just be zero. So I'm just going to cross those out they're all equal to zero. And so we are left with the absolute value of negative nine divided by the square root of five squared plus one squared plus a negative one squared. Five squared is 25, one squared is one, and negative one squared is one. So we have 25 plus one plus one, which is 27. So we have the square root of 27. And now we can simplify further. The absolute value of negative nine will be positive nine. So our distance will be equal to nine divided by the square root of 27, but we can actually simplify that further. 27 is a factor that is a perfect square, that being nine, 27 is equal to three times nine. So we'd have the square root of three times nine 
but the square root of nine is three. So we can pull that outside of the square root. And so this will be equal to nine divided by three square roots of three and nine divided by three is three. So this would be equal to three divided by the square root of three. And then I typically don't do this. You don't have to rationalize your answer. You could just stop right here and say that the distance is three divided by the square root of three. But this will simplify pretty nicely if you do rationalize it, if you get rid of that square root in the denominator. So what I'm going to do is multiply by a form of one of the square root of three divided by itself. And then the square root of three times the square root of three is three. So this becomes three square roots of three divided by three and those threes cancel out. So the distance will just be equal to the square root of three. All right, so I'm gonna write that up here. The distance is equal to the square root of three. That is the final answer to this example. And if you want the approximate value, the square root of three is approximately equal to 1.73 and some more decimals. But typically I like to give the exact value for these types of problems. Okay, and so the square root of three is the distance between this point and this plane in the 3D coordinate system. And so that's how you use this formula to find that distance. Let's take a look at another example. For our next example, we once again wanna find the distance between the point and the plane. And we're given a point of one, three, negative one, and a plane of three X minus four Y plus five Z equals six. So we're calculating the same type of distance in this example as we were in the previous one. We're finding the distance between a point and a plane. So we're gonna be using the same formula that we used before. And so let's identify all of the parts of this formula. Note that x sub zero, y sub zero, and z sub zero are just the coordinates of the given point. So I'm not gonna to bother to rewrite those, but we do wanna identify our values of a, b, c, and d. A, B, and C, of course, are the coefficients of X, Y, and Z from the plane equation. And then D is that value that those terms are equal to in that equation. So in this case, A is equal to three, B is equal to negative four, C is equal to five, and then D would be equal to six. All right, and so now we have everything that we need to set up this formula. So let's do that. We'll have that the distance is equal to the absolute value of a times x sub zero, so we'll have three times one, so I'll write three times one, plus b times y sub zero, so we'll have negative four times three, so I'll write negative four times three, and then we'll add that to c times z sub zero, so that'll be five times negative one, so I'll write five times negative one, and then we are subtracting our value of d, which is six. So we'll have minus six, okay? Now, in the denominator, we'll have the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So that will be three squared plus negative four squared plus five squared. All right, and so now if we simplify, we'll have that the distance is equal to the absolute value of three minus 12 minus five minus six, and then that is divided by the square root of nine plus 16 plus 25. Now three minus 12, that would be negative nine, minus five would be negative 14, minus six would be negative 20. All right, and so this will be equal to the absolute value of negative 20 divided by the square root of nine plus 16 plus 25. That'll be 50, right? Nine plus 16 is 25 plus another 25 is 50. So we have the square root of 50. And then we can simplify further this will be equal to positive 20 divided by the square root of 50, right? The absolute value of negative 20 will be positive 20. And then the square root of 50 can be simplified. 50 has a factor that is a perfect square, which is 25. You could rewrite the square root of 50 to be the square root of 25 times two, but since the square root of 25 is five, we can pull that out and have five times the square root of two. So I'll write five times the square root of two, okay? Now 20 divided by five is four. So this would be equal to four divided by the square root of two. And once again, you don't have to do this. You don't have to rationalize your answer, but this one does simplify nicely if you do. To get rid of that square root in the denominator, I'll multiply by a form of one of the square root of two divided by itself. And then the square root of two times itself is positive two. So this will become four square roots of two divided by two and four divided by two is two which means that four divided by the square root of two will just become two 
square roots of two. That is the distance between this point and this plane. And once again, if you want to know the approximate value, that distance is approximately equal to 2.828 and some more decimals. Okay, and so that's it for this example. And this was the last example where we are finding the distance between a point and a plane. Now let's look at a different type of distance. In this example, we want to find the distance between the parallel planes. And so we have two equations of two different planes, although they do look very similar, but that's just because they are parallel. Remember that parallel planes will share the same normal vector. And so the coefficients of x, y, and z for those two planes should look the same as they are right here. You have a coefficient of one for x, negative three for y, and positive four for z. The only difference between these two equations are those values that those terms are equal to the value of d for each of those plane equations. Okay, and so if you wanna calculate the distance between these parallel planes, you need to know the formula for calculating the distance between two parallel planes. And it looks like this. It's very similar to the distance between a point and a plane, but it's a little bit simpler. Once again, if you wanna know where this formula comes from, be sure to check out my lesson video on this topic. I show you how you get this formula and why it works. But in this case, the distance between two parallel planes is equal to the absolute value of d2 minus d1. In other words, we have the absolute value of the difference between the two d values from those plane equations. And then we're dividing that by the magnitude of the normal vector for those planes, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, and so let's set this up. First thing that we should do is identify our values of a, b, and c, and then our two d values. Okay, and so we can see that a would be equal to one, b would be equal to negative three, and c would be equal to four, right? Just like I pointed out earlier, one is the coefficient of x, negative three is the coefficient of y, and four is the coefficient of z, all right? And now for our two values of d, I'm going to call this 12 right here, that will be d1, that will be the value of d from our first plane equation, and then we'll call eight, d2, so d2 will be equal to eight. That is the value of d for our second plane equation, okay? It doesn't matter which one you set equal to d1 or d2. Since we're gonna be taking the absolute value of the difference between those two numbers, it doesn't matter the order in which you subtract them, okay? So don't worry about if you make 12 d2 and eight d1, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna get the same thing regardless because of those absolute value bars, okay? But now let's set up our distance formula here. The distance between these two parallel planes will be equal to the absolute value of the difference between those two d values. So we'll have eight minus 12. So I'll write eight minus 12. And then we're dividing by the magnitude of the normal vector, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So we'll have one squared plus a negative three squared plus four squared. All right, one squared plus negative three squared plus four squared. Now if we simplify, 8 minus 12 is negative 4. So this is equal to the absolute value of negative 4 divided by the square root of 1 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. So that will be 1 plus 9 plus 16, right? We have 1 plus 9 plus 16 under that square root. And then the absolute value of negative 4 will be positive 4. So this will be equal to 4 divided by the square root of 1 plus 9 plus 16 which would be 26. So we have four divided by the square root of 26. And I'm just gonna leave it in that form. That's going to be my answer for the distance between these two planes. You could rationalize this answer if you wanted to by multiplying by the square root of 26 divided by itself. If you did that, another acceptable answer would be two square roots of 26 divided by 13. All right, that would be another acceptable answer if you don't like to have square roots in the denominator of your answer. But if you don't really care like I do, then you can keep your answer like this, and that would be the distance between your two planes. All right, in either case, the approximate value of this distance would be 0 0.7845 and some more decimals. That's what you would get if you plugged either of these values into your calculator and got an approximate answer. Okay, and so that's how you calculate the distance between two parallel planes. Let's look at another example. Next up, we have another example where we wanna find the distance between the parallel planes. 
This time we have these two planes, negative 3x plus 6y plus 7z equals 2, and 6x minus 12y minus 14z equals 26. And you'll see that I have our distance formula for the distance between two parallel planes down here for us to reference. Now before we get started here, what do you notice is a little bit off about these plane equations? Hopefully you noticed this right away if you watched the previous example. If you take a look at these two plane equations, you'll see that the coefficients of x, y, and z are not the same for these two equations. And so that seems to imply that they have different normal vectors, but if they're parallel planes, then that can't happen, right? Parallel planes share the same normal vector, or they have normal vectors that are scalar multiples. And so what's going on between these two planes here? Why does it look like they have two different normal vectors, or two different values for a, b, and c? Well, what's going on here is this second plane equation is not fully simplified. It's not reduced to its simplest form, right? Notice that all of these terms, 6x, negative 12y, negative 14z, and 26, are all divisible by 2. Or even better yet, they're all divisible by negative 2. And you'll see why that's important in just a second. Because if we divide all of these terms by negative 2, check out the new plane equation that we will get. We'll have negative 3x plus 6y plus 7z is equal to negative 13. All right, so we divided each of those terms by negative 2, and now the coefficients of x, y, and z for this plane equation match up with this plane equation. We have negative 3 for x, positive 6 for y, and positive 7 for z. All right, if we just divided by 2, we would have the negative version of each of those values. So we needed to divide by negative two to also switch the sign of each of those coefficients. But by reducing this plane equation by negative two, you can now see that these two planes are clearly parallel. They will share the same normal vector. In this form right here, they would also share the same normal vector, but the normal vector for this plane would just be a scalar multiple of this one all of the components of that normal vector would have been multiplied by negative two. All right, but we don't need to worry about that anymore because now we have two plane equations where we can clearly see that they are parallel and so we can calculate the distance between them using this formula. All right, and so let's identify the different values that we need to use. We now know that A will be equal to negative three, B will be equal to positive six, and C will be equal to positive seven, right? Negative three is the coefficient of each of those x's, six is the coefficient of each of those y's, and seven is the coefficient of each of those z's. Now here's where you need to be careful. When we identify our values of d1 and d2, the values that those terms are equal to, make sure for that second equation that you use the new value of d, not the old one, all right? We wanna use that negative 13 that value of d from the equation of that plane where you have the reduced terms, all right? Do not use 26 because the coefficients of those terms do not match the other plane. You wanna use the values of d from the two equations where the x, y, and z terms match up. So what that means is d1 will be equal to two. That's the value of d from this plane equation. And then d2 will be equal to negative 13 the value of d from this plane equation, not this one. Don't use 26, use negative 13. All right, and so now we have everything we need to set up this distance formula, so let's do it. We'll have that the distance between these two parallel planes is equal to the absolute value of the difference between those two d values. We'll have negative 13 minus two, and then we're dividing by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So that will be negative three squared plus six squared plus seven squared. All right, and now if we simplify, negative 13 minus two will be negative 15. So this is equal to the absolute value of negative 15 divided by the square root of negative three squared plus six squared plus seven squared. That will be nine plus 36 plus 49. So we have nine plus 36 plus 49. The absolute value of negative 15 will be positive 15. So this will be equal to 15 divided by the square root of nine plus 36 plus 49. Nine plus 36 is 45. 
and then 45 plus 49 is 94. So we'll have 15 divided by the square root of 94. And the square root of 94 doesn't really simplify, so I'm going to leave it like that. This will be my final answer for the distance between these two parallel planes. If you want to rationalize your answer, you could multiply this expression by a form of 1 of the square root of 94 divided by itself. And if you did that, another correct answer would be 15 times the square root of 94 divided by 94. All right, a little bit of a messier answer, but if you don't like to have square roots in your denominator, then this is totally fine as well. Okay, but either way, the approximate value of that distance is 1.547 and some more decimals. Okay, that's what you would get if you plugged this value or this value into your calculator and got an approximate value. All right, and so that's it for this example. And this was also the last example for finding the distance between two parallel planes. And so for our next example, we're going to be looking at a slightly different type of distance. Hey there, real quick, before we take a look at the next example, if you find my tutorial videos here at JK Math to be helpful and you want access to more content such as exclusive bonus videos and dark mode versions of my videos, I'd invite you to check out my membership site, JK Math Plus, where all of that content is available. To learn how to join and see a full list of everything you'd get access to as a member, you can head over to jkmathematics.com plus. I'll have a link for that in the description of this video. Okay, so if you're interested in becoming a member, feel free to check that out. It's a great way to support me and the tutorials I make, as well as a great way for you to learn math better. But for now, let's get back to the video and take a look at the next example. All right, so next up, we wanna find the distance between the skew lines. And so we have two different lines here represented by two different sets of parametric equations. And what it means for these two lines to be skew lines in 3D space is that they are not parallel lines, meaning they don't have the same direction, but they also do not intersect. They will never cross paths at any point throughout the 3D coordinate system. And so how do we find the distance between two skew lines? Well, as it turns out, Finding the distance between two skew lines is very similar to finding the distance between two parallel planes. And I explain this in greater detail in my lesson video, but to give you the gist of it, if this is line one, I'll label that as L1, and this is line two, imagine that these are two lines that are not parallel, but also never intersect within the 3D coordinate system. These two skew lines, would be contained within parallel planes. This is something that is always true about any two skew lines in the 3D coordinate system. You can find two parallel planes where those lines would be contained in each of them. All right, so maybe one of those planes looks like this, and then the other plane looks like this. Imagine that those two planes are parallel, which I think I sort of did a good job at depicting here. Maybe it's not a perfect drawing, but you kind of get the idea that these two planes are parallel, but both of them contain one of those skew lines. And so you can see that even though these two lines are not parallel and they're not going to intersect, they're still contained within some planes that are parallel. So the distance between those two lines, those two skew lines will be the distance between those two planes that they are inside. All right, this distance here between those two planes, that would also be this distance right here. Doesn't matter how you want to label it. That distance is the distance between those two skew lines and it's the distance between those two parallel planes. So what we have to do in this problem here is find those two parallel planes for these two lines and then calculate the distance between them. And it sounds like it might be a complicated process, but it's not too bad. Let me quickly run you through the steps that we're going to take here. The first thing that we're going to do is find the direction vectors for each of these lines. And then using those direction vectors, we're going to take their cross product and that will give us a vector that is perpendicular to both of those direction vectors and therefore will be perpendicular to both of the planes. And so what we will have found there is a common normal vector between those two planes that we can then use along with a point from each of those lines that would also be in the plane to create an equation for each plane and then calculate the distance between them, all right? Maybe that sounds a little bit more complicated than I was making it seem at first, but sometimes trying to describe the process with words makes things more confusing than if I were just to show you with the actual work. 
So let's do that. Let's just do the math now. Let's find an equation for the parallel planes that these two skew lines would be contained in, and then we'll find the distance between those two planes. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do here is find some direction vectors. We wanna find a vector that is parallel to each of these lines. And so let's start with line one. I'm going to call the direction vector for that line vector v1, and that vector will have components of the coefficients of the parameter t from each parametric equation. All right, if you remember the general form for a set of parametric equations for a line in 3D, it looks like this. X is equal to a times t plus x1, y is equal to b times t plus y1, and z is equal to c times t plus z1, where a, b, and c are called the direction numbers or the components of the direction vector and notice that they are the coefficients of that parameter t in each equation. And so the direction vector for line one will have components of six, five, and then one. So we'll have six, five, one. Now for vector v2, or the direction vector for line two, that vector will have components of negative one, positive two, and then zero, because z equals nine doesn't have a term with a parameter of t in it, so the coefficient of that term must be zero. So vector v2, or the direction vector for line two, will have components of negative one, two, zero. Okay, and then later on, we're going to want to find points from these two lines as well, and those points will be composed of those extra values being added to the term with that parameter t in it. That's what x1, y1, and z1 represent, the coordinates of a point on that line. So we'll come back to that when we want to find points on these lines, because we will need to do that. But for now, let's take things one step at a time. Let's focus on using these direction vectors to find a common normal vector for the parallel planes that these skew lines would be contained within. And so to find that normal vector, which would be a vector perpendicular to both of those lines or perpendicular to both of these direction vectors, what we need to do is take the cross product of these two vectors, and that will give us a vector perpendicular to both of them. Okay, so the normal vector for our parallel planes will be equal to vector v1 cross vector v2. And so let's set up our cross product calculation. Remember, to calculate a cross product, you need to set up a three by three matrix and then calculate the determinant of that matrix. The first row will have the standard unit vectors i, j, and k. The second row will be the components of vector v1. And the third row will be the components of vector v2. Okay, so I'm going to fill in those components right now. If you're not familiar with this process of calculating a cross product, I would recommend that you go ahead and watch my lesson video on the cross product. But if you are familiar with the process, then let's go ahead and calculate this cross product here. We're going to start by looking at vector i. We'll cross out the row and the column that it's in and use the remaining four values to calculate a two by two determinant. We'll have five times zero minus one times two. So that will be zero minus two. So I'll write zero minus two times i, and then we will subtract our j term and add our k term, okay? That's just the definition of how we calculate a three by three determinant or the determinant of a three by three matrix, okay? But let's move on to our j term. We're gonna be looking at j in our matrix. I'll cross out the row and the column that it's in and use the remaining four values to calculate a two by two determinant. So we'll have six times zero, which is zero, minus one times negative one, which is negative one. So we have zero minus negative one. And now we'll look at k in our matrix. So we'll cross out the row and the column that vector k is in and use the remaining four values to calculate another two by two determinant. So we'll have six times two, which is 12, minus five times negative one, which is negative five. So we have 12 minus negative five. All right, now if we simplify, this will be equal to negative two i, minus j plus 17k, all right? Zero minus two is negative two, so we have negative two i. Zero minus negative one is the same as zero plus one, so we have one j, but then we're subtracting it, so we just have minus j, and then 12 minus negative five is the same as 12 plus five, which is 17, so we have plus 17k, all right? And so this right here, this vector that we found is the cross product of these two direction vectors and it's also the normal vector for the parallel planes that contain these skew lines. This vector is not only perpendicular to both of these vectors and both of these lines, but it's also perpendicular to both of the parallel planes that contain these skew lines, 
all right? So it would be the common normal vector that we can use to create an equation for each of those parallel planes. And remember, in order to create the equation of a plane, or in order to represent a plane in 3D space, you need two things. You need a normal vector to that plane, and you need a point in that plane. And so now this is where we have to find some points along these lines. Because if the parallel planes that we're trying to represent contain these lines, what we can do is find a point on these lines, and those points would also be in those planes. All right, the point on line one will be in the plane that line one is contained in, and a point on line two will also be contained in the plane that contains that line. So now what we need to do is what I talked about earlier, find the coordinates of a point on each of these lines. If we're trying to find a point on each of these lines using these sets of parametric equations, once again, remember the general form of a set of parametric equations for a line in 3D space. The coordinates of a point on the line are represented by x1, y1, and z1, those extra values being added to the term with the parameter t in it. So for line one, a point on this line would have coordinates of negative one, and then zero, and positive one, right? Nothing's being added to 5t, so that y coordinate must be zero. So for line one, a point on that line, which I'll call p1, will have coordinates of negative one, zero, and one. And then for line two, the extra values being added to the term with the parameter t are zero, three, and nine, right? We have x equals negative t, and then nothing else. So there's nothing being added to negative t. So the x coordinate will be zero for that point. Then we have two t plus three. So three is the extra value being added. And then z equals nine doesn't have a term with t in it, but nine would be the z coordinate. All right, so p2 or the point on line two that we found here will have coordinates of zero, three, and nine. Okay, and so now what we can do is use these two points along with this normal vector, this vector right here, to create equations of the parallel planes that contain these skew lines. And once we have those equations, we can use them to calculate the distance between those two planes, which would also be the distance between these two skew lines. All right, so now remember how we set up the equation of a plane. It looks like this. We have a times x minus x1 plus b times y minus y1 plus c times z minus z1, and that's equal to zero. And a, b, and c are the components of the normal vector for that plane. So that would be negative two, negative one, and 17, the coefficients of i, j, and k. Those are the components of that normal vector. And then x1, y1, and z1 are the coordinates of the point that we're going to use to create the equation of that plane. All right, so now we're gonna be using the same normal vector for both of these plane equations, but then we're going to change what point we're using. This point, P1, will help us create the equation of the plane that line one is contained in. And then this point, point P2, will help us create the equation of the plane that line two is contained in. And since we're using the same normal vector for both of those planes, those two planes will be parallel, and then we can calculate the distance between them. Okay, so let's set this up here. A is going to be equal to negative two, B is equal to negative one, and C is equal to 17. And so using those values, let's set up the equation of the plane using point P1. We will have negative two times x minus negative one, right? That is the x coordinate from our point. Then we'll have plus B, which is negative one. So actually I'm just going to write minus one times y minus y1, the y coordinate from our point, which is zero. So I'll write zero, and then we have plus C, which is 17. So I have 17 times Z minus Z1, which is the Z coordinate from the point, which is one. So we have one, and then that's equal to zero. Now for the other plane equation using point P2, everything will be the same except for those coordinate values that we're subtracting from X, Y, and Z. So we'll have negative two times X minus zero, the X coordinate from that point, and then we'll have minus one, times y minus three, the y coordinate from that point. So we have y minus three, and then we'll have plus 17 times z minus z1, which is nine, the z coordinate for that point. So we have z minus nine, and that's equal to zero. All right, and so now we have two plane equations that we can simplify, and once we have them in their general form, we can use them to calculate the distance 
between these skew lines by calculating the distance between those two planes. All right, and so let's work on simplifying these two plane equations. For both of these equations, I'm going to be distributing negative two through its respective quantities, negative one through its respective quantities, and 17 through its respective quantities. Do notice that x minus negative one is the same as x plus one. So I'm just going to erase that and write x plus one. And now I'm going to simplify and we'll get negative two x minus two minus y plus zero plus 17 z minus 17 equals zero. And then negative two x plus zero minus y plus three plus 17 z minus 153 and that's equal to zero. Okay, so now what we wanna do to get these two plane equations in general form is move all of the constant terms over to the other side of the equation. All right, so that's going to be negative two, zero, but we don't really care about zero. I'm just gonna cross that out. That doesn't really affect anything. And then negative 17. And then once again, we have zero, but then three and negative 153, all right? So we're going to be adding two to both sides and adding 17 to both sides for this equation and then subtracting three from both sides and adding 153 to both sides for this equation. So if we do that, we will be left with negative 2x minus y plus 17z is equal to 2 plus 17, which would be 19. So I'm just going to erase that and write 19. And then for the other equation, we'll have negative 2x minus y plus 17z is equal to 153 minus 3, which would be 150. So I'll just erase this and write 150. Okay, and so now we have our two plane equations. Negative 2x minus y plus 17z equals 19, and negative 2x minus y plus 17z equals 150. Notice that both of those plane equations have the same x, y, and z terms, meaning the values of a, b, and c, or the components of the normal vector for those two planes are the same, which they should be because we used the same normal vector to create both of those plane equations. The only thing that's different in these two equations are those values of d. And that's what's going to help us find the distance between those two planes, as well as the distance between these two skew lines. All right, and so we're in the final stretch here. Let's use these two plane equations to find the distance between these skew lines. What we wanna do is now calculate the distance between these two planes. All right, and so remember the formula for calculating the distance between two planes. We used it earlier in this video. It looks like this, the distance is equal to the absolute value of the difference of the d values divided by the magnitude of the normal vector or the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. All right, now remember in this case, a is equal to negative two, b is equal to negative one, and c is equal to 17, right? Those are the coefficients of x, y, and z in both of these equations. They're also the components of that normal vector that we found earlier. But now the two new values that we need to identify are d1 and d2. And so those are the two values of D from these two equations, or those values that the X, Y, and Z terms are equal to, which are 19 and 150. So I'll say that D1 is equal to 19, and D2 is equal to 150. All right, and so now let's use these five values in this formula to calculate the distance. We will have that the distance is equal to the absolute value of D2 minus D1. So we'll have 150 minus 19, and then we are dividing by the square root of the sum of the components of the normal vector squared, which will be a squared plus b squared plus c squared, and so we'll have negative 2 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 17 squared. All right, and now if we simplify, this will be equal to the absolute value of 150 minus 19. That's the same as 131, so we'll have 131 divided by the square root of negative two squared plus a negative one squared plus 17 squared. That will be four plus one plus 289. All right, so we'll have four plus one plus 289, and that will be equal to 294. So I'll erase this and write 294. And then you could leave your answer like this if you wanted to, but we can actually simplify the square root of 294 a little bit. 294 is divisible by a perfect square, in particular 49. So we could say that this is equal to 131 divided by the square root of 49 times six. 49 times six is 294. And the square root of 49 is seven. 
So we can rewrite this to be seven square roots of six. So we'll have seven times the square root of six, and that is the distance between these two planes, which contain these two skew lines, which means that this is also the distance between those two skew lines. All right, and so we finally got to the final answer of this example. There are a lot of steps involved, but really none of it is too difficult to do once you understand what you have to do. It's just a little bit time consuming is all. Okay, and once again, if you were to try to rationalize this answer, if you don't like having square roots in the denominator of a fraction, you can multiply by a form of one of the square root of six divided by itself. You would find that another answer would be 131 times the square root of six divided by 42, okay? And then also the approximate value of those two answers would be 7.64 and some more decimals. Okay, so both of these answers are correct, but both of them should be equal to the same approximate value if you plug them into your calculator. All right, and so with that, that is it for this example, but let's take a look at one more example for this video where we will find one more different type of distance. All right, so here's our last example. We wanna find the distance between the point and the line, and so we're given a point here of one five negative two and a line represented by a set of parametric equations. And so this is the last type of distance that we're going to look at in this video. We've already looked at how to find the distance between a point and a plane, the distance between two parallel planes, and the distance between skew lines. Now we're looking at how to find the distance between a point and a line. All right, and so if you want to find the distance between a point and a line, here's the formula that you need to know. The distance is equal to the magnitude of the cross product between two vectors, vector v and vector u, divided by the magnitude of vector v. Now, at first, this is probably pretty confusing because what is vector v and what is vector u? I'll explain that, but if you do want to see where this formula comes from and why it works, be sure to check out my lesson video on this topic. Once again, just like with all the other formulas, this video is just focusing on using the formulas, not necessarily where they come from and why they work. Okay, but now with that being said, I do have to explain what vector v and vector u are, because if you look at the given information here, we don't have any vectors right now, so it's a little unclear how we proceed with this formula and finding the distance between this point and this line. But here's what these vectors represent. Vector v is the direction vector from the line that you've been given, so that's not too bad, but then vector u is a little bit more tricky. It's a little bit more complicated. Vector u represents a vector that connects the point that you've been given to a point on the line that you've been given. It's a vector that connects your line to the point that you were trying to calculate the distance to. Okay, so if I draw a quick diagram here, if this is our line and this is our point, our direction vector might look something like this, that might be vector v, and then if we were to look at a point somewhere along that line, we would then connect that point to the other point where we wanna calculate that distance, and that vector would be vector u. Okay, so we're trying to find this distance between this point and this line. And to do that, we need this direction vector and this vector u that connects a point on that line to that given point. Okay, once again, if you wanna know how this diagram relates to this formula and how we get here, please do check out my lesson video on this topic. Okay, but now that you have an idea of what vector v and vector u are, let's find them and then we can use this formula. Let's start by finding vector v. That's just going to be a direction vector for this line. And so we can find that pretty easily by looking at the coefficients of the parameter t in each parametric equation. So the x component will be four, the y component will be zero because there is no term with t, and then the z component will be negative one. All right, so we will have four, zero, and negative one. That is a direction vector for this line. That will be vector v. But now let's find vector u. In order to find that, we need to identify a point on this line and then create a vector between that point and the other point that we've been given. And so to find a point on this line, we just have to look at those other values in those parametric equations being added to the term with the parameter t. And so that will be negative two, three, one. All right, so a point on this line will be negative two, three, one. Okay, the x coordinate is negative two, the y coordinate is three, and the z coordinate is one. Now, what we wanna do is find vector u using those two points. We found a point P on this line, and we wanna connect it to this point that we wanna calculate the distance to from this line. And so we'll treat this point as the terminal point, 
and the point on our line as the initial point. And so I'm gonna be subtracting these coordinates from these coordinates, all right? So if we write out vector u in component form here, we're going to have three components. For the x component, we'll have one minus negative two. So we'll have one minus negative two. Then for the y component, we'll have five minus three. So we'll write five minus three. And then for the z component, we'll have negative two minus one. And so we'll write negative two minus one. Now, if we simplify, vector u will be equal to three, two, negative three. And so now we have both vector v and vector u, and so we can use them to calculate the distance between this point and this line. But before we can do that, notice that we need to find the magnitude of a cross product vector. And so before we can set up this formula, we should find that cross product vector. All right, so what we need to do is take the cross product of vector v and vector u. So let's work on that next. Remember that if you wanna take the cross product of two vectors, what you have to do is set up a three by three matrix where the first row is the standard unit vectors, i, j, and k. The second row will be the components of the first vector and the third row will be the components of the second vector. So we'll have the components of vector v and then the components of vector u. And then what we'll do is take the determinant of this three by three matrix. So if I write in these components over here, We'll have four, zero, negative one, and three, two, negative three. All right, and so this will be equal to a vector where we'll have a value times i, then we'll subtract a value times j, and then add a value times k. All right, let's start by looking at i. We'll cross out the row and the column of i and use these four values to calculate a two by two determinant. So we'll have zero times negative three, which is zero, minus negative one times two, which is negative two. So we have zero minus negative two. Then for j, we'll cross out that row and that column and work with these four values to calculate a two by two determinant. We'll have four times negative three, which is negative 12, minus negative one times three, which is negative three. So we have negative 12 minus negative three. And then we'll move on to vector k. So we'll cross out the row and the column that k is in and use the remaining four values to calculate another two by two determinant. We'll have four times two, which is eight, minus zero times three, which is zero. So we have eight minus zero. Okay, and so now if we simplify, zero minus negative two is the same as zero plus two. So this is equal to two i, and then we are subtracting negative 12 minus negative three. That will be the same as negative 12 plus three, which is a negative nine. So we have minus negative nine times j, which will become plus nine j. And then we have plus eight minus zero times k, which will become 8k. All right, and so now what we have right here is the cross product of vector v and vector u, which we need to calculate the distance between this point and this line. In particular, we need the magnitude of that vector, and then we'll divide it by the magnitude of vector v. And so let's work on calculating this distance next. The distance will be equal to the magnitude of this cross product vector. And remember, the magnitude of a vector is equal to the square root of the sum of its components squared. So I have two squared plus nine squared plus eight squared. So I'll write two squared plus nine squared plus eight squared. And then we are dividing by the magnitude of vector v. So we'll take the square root of the sum of these components squared. So I'll have the square root of four squared plus zero squared plus negative one squared. All right, and now if we simplify, We'll have the square root of four plus 81 plus 64, and that will be divided by the square root of 16 plus one. And now four plus 81 is 85 plus 64 is 149. So this is equal to the square root of 149 divided by the square root of 16 plus one, which is 17. So we'll have the square root of 17. And then that doesn't really simplify to be anything nicer, but what you could do is rationalize it since this is kind of an ugly answer, I'm not a big fan of a square root divided by another square root. Let's try to make it look a little bit nicer by rationalizing. I didn't really do this explicitly for some of the other examples, but I'll do it here. We'll multiply by a form of one of the square root of 17 divided by itself, and that'll get rid of that square root in the denominator. The square root of 17 times itself is 17, so this will be equal to the square root of 149 times the square root of 17. And if you multiply 149 by 17, you will get 2,533, and so that will be under the square root, and then you're dividing by 17. That's a little bit of a nicer answer for the distance between the point and the line that we've been given, 
but that answer that we had before would also have been acceptable. Either way, the approximate answer is 2.96 and some more decimals. So if you plug this expression into your calculator, that is what you should get as an approximate value. Okay, but with that, this is the distance between this line and this point. It's the square root of 2,533 divided by 17. Okay, and so that's how you find the distance between a point and a line. And so with that, this was the last example for this video. But if you do want to see some more examples, I have a couple more available on my membership site. So if that's something that interests you, feel free to look into becoming a member. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.